everybody, this is A Train, and here with another do it yourself tips and tricks. And I got a message about my Battlefield HUD uh, heads up display for some of my first person action. And I've toyed around with it a little bit, it takes a little bit of time and editing. Uh, but it is a nice finish. So, in anything you do, racing, flying, paintball, airsoft, whatever it is, you can probably incorporate this with a little bit of creativity. So, I'm going to flip the screen over and I'm going to show you how I do it. If you have any questions, hit me up. If you'd like me to make one for you, who knows? Give me a call. So, here we go. You're going to need... Um, Illustrator, Photoshop, uh, some rendering software, and of course your video editing software with layers. So as long as you work uh, cross-platform, you're going to be good. And for this one, I'm going to use Adobe Photoshop CS6 and Premiere Pro CS6. So here we go. All right, so we're going to use Adobe Photoshop. We're going to create a new file. And we'll just call it Active Heads Up Display. And you will want to create a new file in the exact dimensions of what you're going to render in your video. So, <coughs> for this example, going to do a 720p which is 1280 by 720 and use some high resolution which is 300 dpi so we've got that now what we're going to use is we're going to go over to YouTube and you find a pretty good contrasting um, video that shows the HUD that you could probably duplicate and again a lot of the things don't transfer into what you're doing um, this would be great for um, paintball, airsoft, combat sports, things of that nature. But you could do this for racing, biking. You could have some fun with it. So be creative and come up with your own ideas. Now, I'm on a PC, so I'm going to hit print. Pretty much done with that. And I can hit Control v as in Victor, and it'll paste. Uh, make sure you got some good music on. And not a lot of distractions because this is going to take you a little time. You can marquee out the area that you need. Delete what you don't. And Move things around so that they fit on the screen where you would like them. Now I'm going to show you this in a couple different areas on how you can do it. <clears throat> then I'm going to show you how to animate it. So we're going to create a new layer. We've basically got our base layer, which is going to be our template. And we're going to go back to the kindergarten and first grade where you trace a little bit. So, let's get into it. I'll make one or two little sections here that make sense. Uh, we'll use the mini-map. I'll grab the color that I need, which will be a blue. And my polygonal tool. You can use the pen tool. You can use whatever force of habit you've already used. And you basically trace this out. and stroke the path with a one pixel layers locked, sorry Did that work? Maybe I need to do a little more Two's about right Looks good to me Let's go on to this section. And as in any design, um, 
especially with this, you want to think in layers. Layers that are going to move and layers that are going to be locked. So we've got those two there. Now I want to create a layer behind it. As you see, this has some sort of opacity. Now, if you want to do a mini-map, I have actually done a live mini-map. Looks pretty gnarly, but it's a lot of work, and I'm not going to get into that today. So uh, on my videos, I use this to let people know where I'm playing because I get to travel around and play paintball at so many neat places and they're usually very hospitable so if I like you you get to go and I feature where I've played now notice this layer is behind I am going to choose a grayish color for a little artistic expression and I'm going to fill that area with the gray layer that I've picked then I'm going to turn down the opacity so you can still see my video behind it but I'll put something cool here so this is what I'll do I'll add a text layer and lock it in I say be as picky as you possibly can be because it makes the finish look good um, also, this field in the game doesn't translate well into live action, so usually I put what faction I'm in right on that field. You can go through, make yourself folders <coughs> that help you identify what things are. Uh, leave your text files open actually this one I won't need to change because that's what I use merge things down once you've got them right and that way you can go back in and if one game you're the bad guys you can go in and change it to bad but this time we're gonna play the good guys you can go through and use these or don't. There is a little box here that I would like to replicate. And you can put in there something that is static, you can put in something there that is dynamic. Um, the more you animate, the more time this is going to take. Um, I usually put the two factions in here, good guys and bad guys. <coughs> and you have to use a little creativity. Uh, you could actually put a timer in there. Uh, using the time code feature in Premiere Pro. But you will have that. Um, and let's do something else we can animate. So I'll make another folder. I'll make it an opaque. I'm going to fill it with black so it'll stand out a little better. Good. So you can put all the, again, different elements that you want to use. Uh, I don't know if anything will translate over perfectly, so. There, I did it again. So these are going to be my locked layers. <clears throat> now, for whatever you're going to use, you can change. You have to make the elements that you're going to switch. So in mine, I'll grab a file here. All right, now here's where some of the creative license takes place. In my channel, for example, I 
have some good friends over at R7 USA that have the replay cameras. So I'm going to feature them. I'm going to drop and make one of these the confirm your kills meter. Drop that in there and then I will put the number of kills I got. <clears throat> Actually I want to bring that opacity up a bit. Sometimes if you've already merged it you can just duplicate your layer. Yeah that'll bring it up. Okay and I use this section for my field of play so uh, for this one we'll oh, let's put in total control paintball here and we'll size it so that it fits um, another way I do it is color coding so things that are red have to be changed and things that are green do not because for this entire render I'm gonna use this entire thing those are all gonna be static So I am going to save this complete thing. Those are things that are not going to move. I didn't switch sides. I didn't switch fields. And I didn't switch cameras. All right. Now let's in introduce the dynamic parts. And I'm going to do my hits, which will be text. Zero hits. You always start out with a clean slate. Not for racing or anything or magazines. You can go through your video and see how many magazines you've switched or how many pods you have left. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then I'm going to make one. Then I'm going to duplicate this layer and make a two. And you can see what I'm doing here. I can turn those on and off as I need. So we are now going to add in the dynamic pieces. And it's hard to tell, but right here I've got my zeros. Nothing else left on my template. And I'm going to save this as zero hits. I'm going to highlight the one so that the one is open. I'm going to make it visible and shut everything else off. Save as one hit. And so on and so on. All right, now let's get animating. So I found the video that I want to use and I've got my footage and I grabbed all the little elements. I grabbed my static active HUD, uh, my zero hits, one hits, and two hits which are my dynamic parts and that's all I'm going to use. And then I've also grabbed an audio effect <laughs> which I'm going to use to sell it. You go through your video and find the moment. Um, I always like to pre-render but I'm not going to do it this time. And you can find the moment where <coughs> You make your hit, uh, but you put your active HUD, your static parts, and as a top layer, you can see that it fits right on there because you actually created the file in the size that you were going to render. And we always start out with zero hits, and on 
say this frame over here is where we're going to hit the guy. And this player was actually very brave. And then we're going to change it to 1. Actually, have to be a little before that. And now I've basically animated it. So when I render, and you can see the number change. Now to help sell that effect, I will go right to that point and I'll go into the audio section and I will drop in another effect because not only are we playing with the visual aspect, there also needs to be an audio event. And if you've ever seen some of my stuff, I always think a coin sounds good. And we'll make that a little louder. Turn on the music. And that's the basics of how to make an animated heads-up display for your videos. Remember the static and dynamic parts. The dynamic parts are going to be the ones that move and that you have to hand animate in time and re-render. They help tell your story. Too many of them will give you a sensory overload and too few of them will seem kind of boring like you're just trying to hack it out. So find that balance. Play with it and come up with your own ideas. That's why I only showed you how to animate one thing. Bring your own story, your own flavor to the finish and design of your channel. And I can't wait to see it. Um, some examples of other people that use it are Alabaster Slim. He did a, a nice little HUD. I, I always thought that one was cool. Um, I helped a friend of mine, Scarecrow. So he's taken that and evolved it and gotten pretty darn good with it. It's got a neat flavor. And of course there's my channel. You're welcome to comment, like, share, subscribe, check it out, see how I've used it. It's actually evolved. Um, I use a lot of dynamic parts so you can go back and watch and say, wow, cool. Um, somebody did ask me how I do my motion tracking. You can do it in After Effects if you have a stationary camera. I'm rarely stationary, so I actually do those things frame by frame. I'm not explaining how to do that. It takes a long time. But I do enjoy the finish, and I do enjoy the compliment. So hope to see you out on the paintball fields. Ask me any questions on the comments below. And if I can help you out in any way, give me a shout. Later. For more do-it-yourself paintball video tips and tricks, subscribe, comment, and interact. Let us know what you think.